Hi folks, welcome to the first Rapido meter machining video. Let's make this steel base to it. So let's talk about feeds and speeds, machining the steel on the Tormach, and then we'll ream this hole through it. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Nine and one eighth, let's go cut some material. Spotting holes, you can spot way faster than I used to. 250 service feet a minute, plunge feed rate of 10 thou per revolution, that's 40 inches a minute, retract at 100. We're only going down 45 thousandth of an inch. Drilling with a 1 8 inch high speed steel twist drill, 125 surface feet per minute at 4 thou per revolution. That's only 15 inches a minute, taking it easy. Again, retract as quick as you can. Pecking at 35 thou does a nice job breaking up the chips. Drilling out with a letter B drill. This is a pre-ream drill for the shoulder bolts. 125 surface feet per minute, 10 inches per minute plunge. I forgot my retract feed rate, oops, to bump that high, and pecking in 25 thou. That's a little light, actually, now that I look at that. 3 8 inch end mill, 166 service feet per minute, 2 thou per rev. However, that's not what you saw. What you saw here is chatter, and we need to have a little talk, because when is chatter okay? Never. Why do we get chatter? Can depend on the situation, but generally it's either from the tool holder, so we've got a weak tool holder or perhaps a, a bad ER collet that's allowing it to, to vibrate or give resonance. Too much tool stick out. This is probably one of the more common culprits. Too much depth of cut. In other words, you're asking the tool to do too much, uh, too high a surface footage, especially given the rigidity and weight of the machining center or machine you're using too low a chip load per tooth. We'll come back to this, um, or your workpiece holding isn't good enough. You say you're holding a thin part and it's just allowed to vibrate, uh, or there's too much unsupported. Like here, we've got some sticking out. In this case, I'm not worried about it. It's only sticking about out about two times longer than it is thicker. So what do you do when you've got chatter? The first thing is make use of path pilots or your machine's uh, override. So first thing I do is maybe counterintuitive, increase the feed rate. In other words, go faster or decrease the RPM. Both of those increase the chip load per tooth. Decreasing the RPM can also help change your resonance. Sometimes there's just funky spots where it doesn't wanna work. If you're gonna go back into cam, I'd recommend decreasing your depth of cut as a test, and then likewise, making permanent some changes that you learned from your feed rate override. So increase your inches per minute or decrease the RPM. Lastly, one of the best things that is also counterintuitive is to increase your width of cut. And this is a similar improvement to increasing the feed per tooth. Take a look at these two cuts. Let's say this rectangle is our workpiece, and this circle is our cutter, and these blue lines are the four flutes. When I've got a thinner width of cut, so the width of cut being the overlap here, as I rotate this tool around, you can see it's all disengaged. So the next tool flute comes in, and then it leaves before the next flute gets there. Now, flutes have helical spirals to them, so this isn't totally accurate, but I think it shows the point well that when you have more width of cut, the next flute is engaged before the first one leaves. And what that means is you may have less of a hammering action and it may be a smoother transition between flutes. And a lot of times chatter doesn't take that much tweaking to improve. At the machine, check your tool run out, check your tool stick out, try a different tool, make sure your part is being held securely. I just increased the feed rate to 134%. Sounds better. Let's go up to 150. There we go. A lot of times your machine can handle the increased horsepower requirements of a higher feed rate, and that a lot of times will help solve that chatter. I do try to stick with quarter inch tooling. I find getting the sweet spot on the Tormach is much easier than uh, three eighths or half inch. But here again, we've got it actually cutting quite well, except that little spot right there. 
I bet you, honestly, I should check my Gibbs. We'll keep you posted. Yeah. Here, listen for it here. I don't know. It's all about learning the tool and the machine. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Cleaning up the backside, 150 surface feet, only one thou per tooth. Full depth of cut, we're, axial stock, we're dropping 10 thou below the part. That way we make sure we clean the whole side up. 2D adaptive with a quarter inch four flute lakeshore carbide end mill. This tool, I love, I know it. 200 surface feet per minute, two and a half thou per tooth, which is 30 inches a minute, cuts beautifully. 0.05 or 20% optimal load. We're leaving five thou radial stock, which will come in and clean up. And we're doing a helical plunge in, which you can see walks into that hole. I could probably do a steeper ramp in since we've pre-drilled it. I think this is a great example of where the fog buster shines because it's able to blow air into a smaller cavity and evacuate chips. Evacuating chips is by far, in my opinion, more important than the lubricity or cooling action of coolant. When you think about it, if you recut a chip, you may be doubling up the chip load or that in fact itself could cause chatter. And finally, some edge break chamfers, quarter inch, 45 degree carbide chamfer tool, 300 surface feet a minute, two thou per tooth, which is 18 inches a minute. Small chamfer, only five thou, actually looks a little bit bigger than that, and 40 thou chamfer tip offset. Before we pull it out, let's check our interpolated bore diameter. This set, oh yeah, they're, they're, they're barely marked, 368, it's good to check though. Yep, 368. Couldn't see it on the 367. It might be worn off or it might be a replacement pin. Yeah. Highly recommend, I just got these quantum mics. They have a much steeper pitch screw. They're not even that much more expensive. Just as accurate, uh, absolute, just love it. I use the Shars mics for years. Which I didn't mind, but God, it's uh, it's really nice to have quality measuring tools. Okay. It's kind of what I thought. They may be a little under. Yeah, between three sixty. Oh yeah, three sixty six. So that would be a nine thou press. But we've got such an open wall. Um, Tom said he had fourteen thou uh, on the some on his example video, his first video on the rapidometer series. So. We can always put it back in and open them up, but I think I'm gonna leave it for now. And our shoulder bolt head fits, which is important as well. Our shoulder bolt is actually undersized, which is a bit annoying, getting about 248. Uh, normally they're closer to nominal from my recollection. Am I misremembering that? So I've got a 249 reamer, we'll use that. It, that'll be fine, but I was hoping for a really nice fit uh, with this shoulder bolt through the stack. I am embarrassingly fighting tendonitis, and let me tell you, that is not fun. My doctor told me to stop using a computer mouse. You can imagine that that conversation didn't go very well. Reaming the holes, I really like uh, reaming by hand. Obviously, you want to do it in something like a drill press or a bridge port, but I like being able to feel it. Here, I'm just pecking up to make sure I evacuate the chips. Oh yeah, that's still a nice fit. And my advice on reaming is slow RPMs. And you actually want to feed it uh, faster than a drill. I think, what's the rule of thumb? Half the RPM, twice the feed as when you drill. Now we're setting up for a quick spot drill for our link bar. And then poke all the way through pre-ream with a letter U368. 840 or about 81 service feet a minute. That's actually slower than I needed to run it. And two and a half plunge rate, that's really slow. I didn't, I guess I, should, I didn't catch that. That was probably an old library tool that I just grabbed.
So we're gonna machine the rest of this project, stay tuned, and then when we're done, we'll come back, we'll do the bandsaw slit through here, and we'll press in the hardened ball bearings that will then surface grind the flats onto. We don't do that stuff until the very end, but it'll, I'm excited to do the saw cut that makes the flexure that's really kind of the whole magic to how this thing works. So folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. Take care, see you next Wednesday.